we're good. Yeah, we're Good morning. This is Dr. Jeff James with Dr. Noah Bowen Nutting. Excuse me, Bowen. And <clears throat> that's just part of the many things that we have going on. Of course, the transition plan is eight pages. It's pretty intense, but it's a lot of the work that I'm going to be doing with stakeholders throughout the community. I think it's important to uh, listen to our stakeholders and find out what we're doing right and some of the things we can improve upon. I sort of put an analogy out there being a teacher myself at one time, sort of like going to the doctor. I would hope my doctor, when I walk into his office, just doesn't write me a prescription. He would actually take my temperature, listen to my heart, and unfortunately take my weight. And <laughs> at that point, decide what uh, course of action we should take. So that's basically the transition plan. It by no means has taken precedence over anything else we do. We do understand that our community is concerned about COVID-19 as we are, um, and we watch the news daily. And I do know that you and your team have put a lot of time and effort in developing a very detailed plan for reentry. And uh, of course, we're all waiting for the governor to let us know what his thoughts are on reentry to schools this fall. So uh, we were expecting July 1st to have an answer from the governor's office, and that was pushed forward because of an increase in the number of cases um, throughout our state. So again, we do have a very detailed plan. We have been working on it. Uh, I'm sure hundreds of hours and people have been involved in the plan, very detailed. So I did want to let the audience know that by no means the transition plan take precedence over uh, COVID-19. It's just a plan that I brought in to let the uh, stakeholders throughout our community know what we're going to do moving forward to get their voice at the table and make sure we're doing again what our stakeholders want you know our parents and our students really are a customer so we we definitely need to listen to them and of course teachers want a voice and they should have one both of us have been teachers in our past as we come up to the ranks and become administrators um, and i think both of us have a passionate heart for teachers and the work they do and, and i think we both would say that uh, the job of a teacher has become much more difficult with all yes. the things they face so. Well, and first of all, let me say, Dr. James, welcome back to Iredell State School Schools. Uh, we're happy to have you here. We're excited to have a new superintendent on board. And um, as the Director of Communications and Development, I'm very excited to have a partnership with WSIC this morning. So uh, we're excited about being here with you every week and giving you information about your public schools here in Iredell County. Um, our, our goal here is to um, share with you information about things that are going on currently in the schools, um, but also maybe to educate you about some things that maybe you didn't even know were going on in the schools. So hopefully in the coming weeks uh, you'll learn something new and perhaps we'll answer some of your questions. Um, I think it's important uh, for our listeners to know that Iredell Statesville Schools, we are the the oldest uh, school district in Iredell County. We've been educating children for over 100 years. Uh, we uh, serve over 20,000 students in 37 different campuses. So um, we are excited about an opportunity to um, teach you more about our school system, to build uh, your trust in our school district. And I think that, Dr. James, I want to thank you for this opportunity to, to begin that journey and, and to um, answer any questions that that folks might have about the school district but i have one question for you if you would be willing to just kind of give us a little bit of an overview about your 100 day plan and and uh, talk to us about that i know that um as an administrator that's working for you i'm very interested in in this plan i've read over it several times uh, there are lots of us who've already started with our marching orders from you uh, to make sure that we're addressing the things that um that you think are important but I think there are a lot of things on here that are exciting and um, innovative and forward thinking. And so if maybe we want to just want to spend a few minutes and you tell us about those things and and then then we can get to a little bit more information about COVID. I know that's what everybody's interested in. But the fact of the matter is we don't have a whole lot of answers on that quite yet. Absolutely. Um, but just uh, again, welcome. We're glad you're here. Well, thank you. Um, I'm glad to be back. I was born and raised in Iroquois County. And was fortunate enough to go to the Iredell Statesville School System. I think they've done a, a very good job educating me. And uh, I've, I tell it more often than not, um, I was one of those students that 
by fifth grade had lost interest in school, wasn't that engaged, and my fifth grade teacher changed my life. So I, I have no greater admiration than that for teachers. And I think um, one of the things I want to make sure of is that we're transparent. You know, we're human, and I often tell people, if you prick us, we bleed. We're human. We're going to make decisions sometimes that the, the community doesn't understand. We will uh, do our best to make sure we're transparent in our decisions and to get community input. And I know one of the comments <clears throat> on the 100-day plan that was posted, Idle Free News, we definitely don't want to give teachers more to do, but I will tell you that teachers want us to listen. Uh, as a teacher, if you are going to ask me something, I definitely want you to hear what I was saying and to do something about it. So I didn't want you to waste my time. And that's part of the transition plan is getting everyone on board because we've said this before, and I think as an educator yourself, you would agree with it. It does take a village nowadays to educate a child. Uh, it takes a lot of support services, whether it be the faith-based community. It takes all of us working together. With the county commissioners, you know, they're responsible for allocating tax dollars. I think it's our responsibility as a school system to make sure the public and the commissioners know that we're spending that money wisely. So the transition plan is basically getting to know the key stakeholders in our community and getting input from all of those. Our first day on the job, we actually invited the faith-based community to come in and tell us uh, what was working for them and what wasn't and what their vision, what they envisioned going forward as a school system and the faith-based community. The same thing with commissioners. I've sat down with several already, but talking to them, what are your concerns? <laughs> What are you hearing? What is something we can do better as a school system? And of course, you know, we're both taxpayers in Ira County, so I guess our concern is making sure that our tax dollars are spent wisely and effectively and efficiently. Uh, and that's what we want to do. And of course, my background is a little different than most educators. I was in textiles. Actually, uh, one of the owners of the textile company I worked for uh, for a while was here in Iredell County. And um, through that, um, went on to school and was smart enough, I think, seeing the handwriting on the wall that uh, textiles and furniture were probably going to be leaving the country. So uh, uh, sought after my MBA while I walked, uh, worked a full-time job. So that helped me uh, become even more interested in becoming an educator. So uh, again, downsizing occurred. I was with a company that actually was $4 billion in uh, annual sales, very large, one of the largest producers of jacquard materials in the world. And they started... Um, downsizing and of course at that time I had to make a decision um, and an individual at my church uh, my wife and I had worked with several generations of youth coming through our church and she said I think you would be a great teacher and my wife said you have lost your mind and uh, she said well come by my classroom at East Middle School and just observe and I happened to be there and uh, was offered a job so started out teaching students of special needs and probably the best job I think I've ever had in my life I wouldn't really call it a job. I would say I'm now in a career. I said what I'd done before was a job. This is a calling, and I commend every teacher because it is a difficult job. And I think parents are seeing with uh, COVID-19, unfortunately, that we do a lot of things as a school system, and feeding is one of the most important things. If you look at the amount of meals we serve each and every day, but the transition plan, I'll get into it in more detail in the weeks to come, when we look at it, but basically meeting with key stakeholders, making sure that we're not wasting time, energy, or dollars on things that do not matter. And I, I think as a, you know, as a teacher, as an educator, we would both say we have no problem working harder if it amounts to something at the end, if we've accomplished a goal that helps a child. And um, there's just a lot of resources here in Iredell County that I think we can collaborate together and pull in to help support our students. One of the biggest things, uh, uh, our school system, if you look at the roadmap of need, it's a report that comes out every year. 2019, actually out of 100 counties, our, our state school system ranks 18th, which is not a bad place to be. So there's a lot of great things going on here, and I've said it several times, but a lot of things I learned when I was here the 11 years before I left to become assistant superintendent and superintendent in Stanley uh, there's a lot of great things that go on here in Iredell State Schools, and I wanted to make sure the general public knew what those things were. We offer a plethora of programs here in the county, and you and I have already talked, and uh, some board members, and we're always looking for innovation going forward. So we want to make sure the students here are getting the best possible education. 
And I would tell you with our I Academy, we're offering homeschool students a way to engage with us and get some things they typically would not at homeschool. Right. So the plan again is laid out in very specific steps. There are six goals that I developed after meeting with all the board members. So I have had a chance to meet with them individually listen to their constituent concerns and what they're passionate about so we can work together as a team. And we all know that the more effective a team works together, the more we can accomplish. So that's my goal is to bring the team together and to focus a very tight focus on what matters in the lives of our parents and students. Uh, great things going on here. Um, I will commend the taxpayers and us being two of those. Um, our little system, our little county itself has actually stepped up almost every time to pass bonds to build new schools and to have great facilities. And I can tell you that doesn't happen in every county. I've been in two rural counties where the schools are, are 60 to 50, 50 to 60 years old. Uh, Montgomery County is building a consolidated high school <coughs> to um, actually less expensive to do that than it was to renovate the schools they had. But again, in rural counties around the state, the, the school buildings are aging. And if you think back, uh, back in the 60s and 70s when most of these schools were built, it was basically on business taxes that were paid in. And I would say that it's difficult for homeowners to pay enough property taxes to support that. So it's important that we as a school system prepare our students to go into industry to help the, can maintain the economic viability of our county. And so I know that I served on Economic Development Council in uh, Stanley County and got to hear that quite often, employers wanting to make sure we were uh, putting out students that were ready to go to work, those that didn't want to go on to a four-year university. So um, a lot of things going on in the transition plan, but listening to principals, I want the principals to have an opportunity to tell me about their passions and where they're at and what their why is. Why did you go into education? I think right. I've explained mine. And I want principals to share that with me and be passionate about what we do because this is a very important job and we take it very seriously and we want to work with parents to make sure we're doing the best we possibly can for every child that comes through our doors. And I agree with you. I always say, um, and I, like you, I've been a, a classroom teacher, elementary school teacher, uh, second grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. I've been a principal and assistant principal elementary, middle and high school. Um, and what I can tell you is that other than um, other than being a mom, which is the hardest job in the whole world, um, being a classroom teacher is definitely the most difficult job I've ever had. And I, I like to always say that I believe that teaching is the noblest calling. Absolutely. Um, and so, um, uh, yeah, we've got lots of really great things going on in Iredell County, and I'm excited about, you know, the coming weeks and being able to tell you about those. But I see that we're, we've got about... 12 minutes left and I want to take this time for us to kind of switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about um, COVID-19 and, and okay. what our, our plan is and um, essentially on March the 16th um, our world turned upside down Absolutely. and the world the whole world turned upside down and um, and so right now here we are in what is today July the 7th and um, it, it doesn't even really always feel like it's getting that much better. Um, no. But what I would say is um, just to give it a little bit of an overview of the work that we've been doing this summer to get ready uh, for the start of school. Uh, we do have a start date still from the governor of August the 17th. And, and so we did um, change our calendar around. So we've got an August 17th start date that hasn't, that hasn't changed at this point. Um, we have essentially three different plans uh, that the governor has asked for us to put together, plan A, B, and C, um, and we've done that. We've been working very hard to come up with a pandemic response plan, and essentially plan A um, is what I think a lot of us are hoping for. Uh, plan A is that we get to go back okay. to school. You know, we'd like, we'd like for life to resume, and, and we'd like for everybody to be able to go and go to school. Um, I think that's really important for our listeners to know that Dr. James and I want nothing more than for every child to come back to school and every employee. I, absolutely. I love you guys, but I'd really like to see the kids come back. <laughs> yeah. It's so much more fun when the students are there. Absolutely. Um, so if we get to return, uh, plan A is 100% capacity. We do know that's going to be an issue uh, in regard to transportation and busing. 
Uh, and we can talk a little bit about that. Plan B is a 50% capacity plan. And again, these are things that we don't really get to decide. We're waiting to hear Absolutely. Uh, from our, our friends in Raleigh about that, what plan we can do. Um, plan B would give us a 50% capacity, which means that your students can come to school, but likely not every day. Um, and then plan C is the one we really don't want, and that is that we would be back uh, on a virtual learning opportunity. Um, before I, I let you comment on all of this, I do want to say that uh, we have our curriculum instruction folks have been working tirelessly with our teachers since March um, so that if we do have to come back on Plan C, um, our virtual learning opportunities, uh, remote learning, they, it's not going to be like what it was before. Uh, what we did in March was an emergency. What we did in March was, uh, you know, throw your hands in the air and try to figure out what to do. Um, if we have to do virtual learning in August, we will be much more prepared. We will be holding students accountable. Uh, we will be giving students grades. Um, we will have very, very specific parameters should we have to go back to Plan C. But I think it's important, especially in seeing comments on social media and in the newspaper. And um, just please know that there's nothing that we want more than the Absolutely. students to come and that number two we don't have a lot of control over this at this point so can you talk to us a little bit about uh what you know about the transportation piece and and then also what you what your thoughts are on plan a b and c well as you said uh dr nutty the um people that control the decisions really aren't us it's not a local decision at this point so we we have to wait on the governor and his office and Department of Public Instruction, and of course the General Assembly has weighed in on several different bills that impact what we can or cannot do. But um, yes, and I would I would say that what was done was put together very uh, hurriedly and teachers, but I will tell you this, I commend the teachers and especially child nutrition throughout our entire state, especially here in Ireland, is pulling a plan together at the drop of a hat to make sure kids got fed uh, as soon as possible after we were given the decision, schools were closed on March 16th. But again, teachers are having to sort of relearn content delivery. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if we were both teachers, you were passionate about the way you had done your lesson plans. You had a game plan to walk into your classroom. You knew how you liked to teach that lesson. Ab yep. <laughs> absolutely. So that world ended yep. March the 16th. So yes, uh, I'm sure that we, we had some snags uh, in this county as we did in the county I was at at the time. So again, as professional educators, we sit down, we talk about it, we reflect on how we can improve. That's right. So that was the whole point of you leading this task force is to bring everyone together and talk about where some of the holes were and what we had done. You've done a town hall meeting to get some of the feedback from the parents. I've shared that with our school board. We've used that to improve the process. So it's an ongoing process to learn and improve. And absolutely, we do not want to go back on plan C, but again, we're waiting what the governor's office is going to tell us, and of course the Department of Health and Human Services weighs in on that. Uh, plan B, which would be 50% um, in class and 50% out of class. The, the key problem is when we bus so many students is the capacity on the school bus trying to maintain social distancing. So of course, uh, if we're required to do six foot, six foot spacing, the bus will, you know, somewhere between six and nine students, depending on which grade level. If we're allowed to use face mask and put a child in every other seat, we can get up to about 20 students, maybe a little over. So we, we definitely can get close to that 50% mark. And I think our thoughts would be to have children at least uh, continuity so not just have you in on a monday then come back on thursday but try to keep you in two days of face to face then take a break sanitize our building let teachers reset uh, and definitely want our teachers to be available online for supports tutoring support questions etc so this has um, changed our world as you said before it's changed the teaching world very rapidly and we typically are known as innovators um, and so there are some things we're doing behind the scenes to try to look at um, you know, offering virtual live classes. So if you're a teacher and you're sitting there teaching a group of students, you can actually see students from home. 
So we are starting some of that, but, you know, we were through behind the eight ball on March 16th. Mm -hmm. This, these things take time, and I think both of us have probably taken college courses at some point where we had satellite classes that you got to wave at them and they got to talk to you. So there's some technology out there, but again, uh, typically not in the K-12 arena. So, um, and of course, the best of all worlds would be coming back under Plan A, which we're back in school in full force. So we're not really sure which way the governor's going to um sway uh, i know he's under a lot of political pressure it's definitely not an easy decision on his part or department of health and human services we get constant updates as a superintendent's group there's 116 of us in the state and we're in constant communication as a matter of fact this afternoon we have another conference call so um, there's been a ton of work done behind the scenes by a lot of people across our state so we've not been sitting idly by uh, in education, just waiting for the governor to say something. We've been making plans on reentry uh, starting March 17th. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have put input into it. Again, we we do. I'm sure we've surveyed people to death, but we need we need to know what the community is expecting, or your fears, concerns, and how we can work to make sure we've covered those, depending on which plan we return under. A couple of things that. Um, um we have talked about, for example, we've talked about um, student access to devices. Um, we've also talked about connectivity. That's a huge issue Absolutely. here in Iredell County. Um, so we're working on some really innovative ideas like putting uh, internet uh, hotspots on school buses and parking those school buses in locations that don't have access to internet um, um, regularly. Um, we are talking about things like students that are, you know, behind in reading. If you're a student that's a couple years behind in reading, we're going to need to make sure that you get special attention. If you're a child with an IEP, um, if you have special services that you need to receive. Um, so this, this plan for Plan B will not be a one-size-fits-all. Absolutely. Um, also, we're even talking about um, for those students that you know that there's some students that since March, they haven't done much work. Yeah. And um, so if some of those kids, we may ask them to come back just because they're, they're not doing their work. So um, we have a lot of ideas about how to better meet the needs of our students should we have to go with Plan B. Uh, and that does also uh, include having some in-class time and face-to-face -face time for classes that don't lend themselves to virtual learning, like our auto tech classes or your band class or things like that. So um, we've had all kinds of different ideas on the table, lots of discussion about child care, uh, how we can work with agencies in our community. I've had conversations with folks at the Boys and Girls Club, um, at the United Way, you know, how can we pull together as a community and make sure that we're able to provide care for our children during this time. So please know that we are, we are thinking of all these things um, and, and we um, appreciate your patience. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, sports. We didn't mention sports. Oh, but, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Sports is... Uh, and you have less than a minute left. Yes. <laughs> wow. We'll, we'll never get all that in. But sports, uh, definitely. And I, I was asked at church Sunday uh, about football, and I said, again, we're waiting on a decision. There's a lot of things being floated. Uh, I've heard football being pushed to the spring. That's not a done deal, uh, but a lot of conversations going on. It's just not an easy decision. It impacts a lot of different things, what we do. So that's why we do survey. We do ask for input from our stakeholders. We need your voice at the table to do the right thing. So again, uh, we thank you for tuning in today. Uh, hopefully you'll read the superintendent's transition plan and, and not let it concern you that it's going to morph anything else that we're doing. We're educators, and we've learned to juggle a lot of different balls at one time. So thank Have you for tuning in. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.